world. What impresses me about this picture, though, are these geese, the world's fastest geese. <laughs> about to break Mach 1, the sound barrier, I would estimate, flying away from an RB211E4 engine. So, yeah. Um, flying. You could go on about it all night, but you'd lose the will to live. Uh, <laughs> Series of three pictures. Middle one, fat, dumb, and happy, 1985. Don't ask me about the toilet seat, I can't explain. <laughs> <laughs> this one was taken after I got done with cancer treatment. So, so I, got the, I got the all clear for my cancer treatment. And um, we needed to take some pictures for the Book of Souls, um, you know, promotion and stuff. So, uh, at the time, um, you know, uh, the chemo and radiation, you know, I basically had no immune system. So, um, I said, tell you what, let's go to the Mexican jungle and do a photo session. <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? You know? um, and, uh, yeah, and there we have it. I kind of reprised the shot in the same way. And I've got to say, I mean, look at the body fat percentage on that boy, right? I mean, I don't recommend chemo and radiation as a weight loss program. Weight watchers is like more gentle. <laughs> but take any advantage you can get. <laughs> I'm a glass high full kind of a guy. I mean, when I got told that I had cancer, well, the first thing was like, how are they going to tell me? Because I knew I had cancer. I knew. Because I googled it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, well, how are they going to actually tell me it's coming up to Christmas? It's going to be a special present. Right? So I thought, roaring log fire, glass of brandy, blowjob. <laughs> We've got some, got some bad news for you, but this may sweep the pill a bit. No, it doesn't happen like that at all. You turn up, uh, there's the lady sitting behind the desk and she says, Hey, yeah, date of birth, X, Y, Z. Yeah, that's you, then. You've got cancer. See you tomorrow. Bye. That's it. Wow. And at that moment, the next 10 seconds of your life changes. And then every 10 seconds after that as well. And I went into a dark place for about two weeks. Suddenly, instead of blue skies, chirping birds, and you know, anything else that was fun, all I saw were hospitals, churches, graveyards, new ones I hadn't spotted before. I go walking down the road, fuck me, there's another hospital, who put that one up there? <laughs> there be somebody in there with cancer. I've got cancer, did you know? Terrible. Shocking, bad for your mental health. And um, so I thought, how do I deal with this? I know, I'll meditate, I will, I will visualize my blob of cancer, and I will stab it with a steel knife, but I just can't kill the beast. I didn't like that, I wish I had. And, <laughs> um, and, and, and that doesn't work either. And I was exhausted. I hadn't even started treatment yet, and I was exhausted. I have to deal with this a different way. So I gave my cancer a personality. Who is this cancer? Well, it's the person that comes to your apartment when you're throwing a party, tries to steal all your best alcohol and fuck your girlfriend. <laughs> you, sir or madam, are leaving, right? And not, don't come back. All right, that's the last we'll see of you. Fine. But I wanted a physical manifestation, so I grew a beard. It's not radical, you would say, most people are growing a beard, everybody grows beards, right? But not a beard like my beard. After about four weeks, I could get away with like Jesus of Nazareth or something like that. But after four weeks, my beard turns into an offensive weapon. It goes out at 90 degrees. So the overall effect is like having a porcupine attached to each cheek. <laughs> my cat was scared shitless of it. <laughs> my wife hated it, my kids hated it, my manager hated it, I hated it. 
And I reasoned that any self-respecting cancer would not be seen alive in a <laughs> with a beard like that, and it would live. 